I want to talk about my shirt. It simply says, happy. That's it. I don't know about you. I mean, I love wearing shirts that say how I feel, but sometimes I wear shirts that help me feel the thing I wish I was feeling. And happy is one of those things I think we all strive for. I mean, doesn't everybody want to have a happy day, have a great day, and not just be fine or okay or woe is me. We all want to be happy. And But the truth is, is we're not always happy. There's, I've had people say to me before, why are you so happy? How are you so happy all the time? You're not negative. You, you don't complain. Why aren't you whining? How can you always be smiling? How can you always be smiling? Well, joy in the Lord is what makes me smile. I'm not always happy. I'm smiling right now and I'm not happy. Do you want me just to tell you a couple of the reasons why I'm not happy? Okay, a couple of the reasons I'm not happy. Um, I'll give you this one. One thing I haven't posted and I thought I had already. Um, finally had an MRI on my shoulder and I have a tear. One of the tendons officially has a tear. So no wonder PT didn't help my shoulder um, from the car accident back in October. So I have a tear. I'm not happy about that. And on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, I'm not happy about it because it hurts. It catches. Um, today's not a great day. It feels very stiff. It feels almost limp, like it's not in natural rhythm. Um, and it just certain things haven't gone exactly the way that I had hoped that they would go over the last couple of days. Um, my Jeep still squeaky, still, you know, bouncing around, making noises that it didn't used to um, before the accident. So I'm not happy about that. I don't have my full Jeep back. I don't have my full body back. I don't have, so there's just, there, and there's so many things I wanted to have done and have not done. So the disappointments in the list can continue to grow. We all have things that we can be negative about and not happy about. There's always going to be something not fulfilled. And this is amplified. This is where my heart is and my ministry, um, new ministry is leaning toward, leaning into those of us who are not only introverts. So the amount of energy that we have is already like, you know, small. But then you add insecurity and shyness. But let's just talk about insecurity. When you struggle with insecurity, you already feel that you have failed in some way or either yourself or others or in a situation, you feel like there's, there's already this eh, wrong answer. So you have that already. Then you have introvert, which just means it's an energy thing. It doesn't mean you don't like people, you don't like doing things, you don't have to hibernate, that's social anxiety. So you have introvertedness, which is a limited take. Well, if you constantly think that you are not, if you're not accomplishing the things, you're not doing the things, you're not checking off the task, you're not feeling the way you should be feeling or doing the things that you should be doing and you're constantly in this defeative mindset or cycle, that is so much more draining than it is to just take that deep breath and say, okay, Lord, what's the next best thing that I can do? So changing your mindset and learning how to change that energy of frustration and unhappiness. Yes, those are facts. The fact is my shoulder is torn and it hurts and I'm frustrated that I can't use it the way that I want. That's a legit valid frustration. So either I can spend all day, every time it hurts me, pouting and complaining or being angry, letting that grow this root of bitterness about it, or I can choose to count blessings. I'm so thankful that it didn't tear so badly that I had to have emergency surgery. I'm so thankful that I didn't, I didn't do more damage to my body in the car accident. I'm so thankful that the kids were okay in the car accident. I'm so thankful I'm still here. Even with a broken wing on this side, I'm still here. What would I trade it for? My perspective is counting joy. So that's the purpose of what I just wanted to share with you today. Is that sometimes, even though you don't feel a certain way, 
being who or what you think you are. If you can be honest in how you feel, I feel frustrated that my shoulder hurts more today than it did yesterday. I'm frustrated that I had that stinking accident back in October. But I'm thankful that I've made calls to doctors. I'm thankful that I was able to have an MRI to see what's going on. I'm thankful for future treatment that is to come. That changes when you start counting the blessings instead of living in the feeling, I guess is what I'm saying. Acknowledge your feeling because when you're, when you struggle with that introvertedness, the shyness and security, you tend to just put on that mask of, Oh, I'm fine. Hi, I'm fine. I'm fine. No, I'm not angry. I'm not frustrated. Everything's good. Everything's fine. That's fake. That's fake peace. And that's not being authentically true to yourself. When you can honestly say, I am angry. I feel frustrated. I see hearts going up. Hey, gorgeous. I miss you. When you can honestly say that your heart is angry, sad, frustrated, disappointed. You're not where you are. You're not where you want to be. You made a mistake. Whatever it is. You can be honest about how you feel, but then from there on, where do you go? You're either digging the seed for hope or you're digging the seed for bitterness. That choice is up to you and your response to this situation and how you feel. And for so, so long, insecurity always made me go down to the, well, you shouldn't have, you know, the whole self-condemnation. When your insecurity rules your brain and that's the filter for everything, all you see and hear and feel is, well, you screwed that up. Well, it ain't going to get any better. Well, too bad. Suck it up, buttercup. Instead of saying, okay, well, that happened. What can I learn? And what am I going to do different? How am I going to change tomorrow's feelings? What can I do to make this situation better? And sometimes you can't change situations or people other than moving on in hope. Nobody is ever stuck in a pit. We're never stuck in the mud. It's eventually gonna dry up and get hard. And you're gonna be able to step right out of that, but it might just take time. But you have to be conscious about how you're feeling. You have to pay attention to what that next step is. So for somebody who has struggled with insecurity, one of the biggest things to do is up here, is stopping that train of thought. It's stopping and interrupting the self-condemnation that comes in because it's not going to get you anywhere. That's just planting seeds of bitterness, okay? So one of the greatest things I've had to do is worship in my worry. So whenever I would have a thought of, you know, with my shoulder, uh, for example, because that's what was really bothering me today. <laughs> I was really frustrated about my shoulder because it hurts and it keeps catching and I'm trying to clean and do laundry and work on my computer and it just keeps clicking and it hurts and it's not moving normally and I want to go get an adjustment right now, but she's not open right now. I can't even if I wanted to. So I'm stuck in this situation at least for the next, she's not even open tomorrow. So Thursday at minimum, if I'm lucky to get an appointment. <sighs> See? So I can, I can legit have that frustration, but now I, I choose to say, okay, well, you know what? I may not be able to do X, Y, and Z today. I'm going to do that on Friday. So what I can do today is ABC. I'm going to choose today to do ABC and I'm going to stop the self condemnation and the cycle of getting you absolutely nowhere except for spin it. If you've ever been, any of my Texas people, you've been mudding. The more you keep spinning those tires, you're just digging down. You're not going to pop out of that, that mud hole. You're going to keep, oh, that is so Texas sounding. <laughs> I'm not even, I'm not even country girl. This is a Texas thing. You get stuck in some mud. You can't just be spinning out those tires because you're really just going to keep, you're just throwing mud. You're just throwing mud. You got to pay attention and be intentional on how you're going to get yourself out of that mud hole. So it takes deliberate, intentional self-control and thinking, just like getting your vehicle out of it, your brain, you got to get your brain out of it. So my challenge to you, my encouragement to you is wherever you find yourself, if you're somebody, especially even confident people get into the funky mindsets. This I'm, my heart really leans to, the amplified version of somebody who's struggling that also struggles with insecurity because I feel like that's just the compounder 
um, of the self-condemnation. Uh, self so when you find yourself, whatever it is that you find yourself frustrated about, angry about, um, disappointed about, I challenge you and encourage you, just like um, they talk about the sandwich, me the sandwich method of communication whenever you're addressing a conflict with somebody. Positive, negative, positive. Just, just cut and dry right in the middle. This is my positive hope. This is what I wish was going on. This is actually what is going on. This is how I feel about it. But this is what I'm going to do moving forward. So you're sandwiching it even in the way that you think in your head of putting it into context of hope. The bottom line, hope. Package it in hope. Because if you don't put that little love sandwich around your feeling, your feeling is not surrounded in love. And if you're not moving forward in love, you're moving nowhere. You're staying stuck. And again, planting that seed of bitterness, planting that seed not of hope for something better and new for tomorrow. So I don't know who else may have needed to hear that. Um, it's, it's definitely a practice of mindset that is constant. Sorry, my throat's drying out in the wind. <clears throat> and this coffee is good. All I need is faith. But if you can relate, I'd love to hear from you that it's not just me. And I, don't, I just don't think that it is because I hear compla people complaining all the time. I mean, we're surrounded by people. And all you have to do is spend five minutes on social media and you're going to see the negative comments too. But then I'm like, okay, but then what? It's okay to say whatever it is, but then where do you leave people off? Where did you go from there? So my hope, my heart, my encouragement is for you to sandwich up your thought life in love and in hope and planting seeds of where you're at honestly and nurturing them in hope because that is the only way to get victory and moving forward in whatever it is that you personally are dealing with. So I hope that's a word of encouragement. Remember, the Lord loves you. I mean, this is the week to really embrace his love for you and um, to have faith and to have courage that you are more than a conqueror. You were, ma you were not made for nothing. You have divine purpose and um, you have all the um, fruits of the spirit, the God living in you as a believer in Jesus. You have that in you, and so that is where the gentleness, kindness, patience, self-control. So, yes, yeah, some of these things come into our life because it's just life. But nothing comes into our life that is not sifted by the Father's hands. So perhaps patience is needed. Maybe gentleness, kindness. Maybe self-control is being exercised. Whatever it is, he'll show you if you ask him. <laughs> He is ever present and ever so loving and wants us to be the better, best and strongest, most courageous version of ourselves. Because when, when we are walking, oh, I'm not going to go on a whole second thing, but let, I'll leave you with this because I plan on doing some more of these conversations. I want to share more of these conversations because I just don't believe I'm the only one. When we are authentically ourselves, and not in a pit of frustration or let's just say anger, if we're not in the pit of anger and we're actually living a life of hope, I feel that that is when we're open and when we're open, we shine brighter. And as a believer, who are you shining? God, the fruit, it's our basket. We show people our basket. That's our light is our basket of fruit of hope and patience and self-control and joy and love. It comes from within. It comes from choosing to lean into him and not ourselves. That could be a whole nother conversation. So anyway, I will hop off. We have stuff to do. My coffee is about done at this point. So hope you all have a wonderful Tuesday. Definitely guard those thoughts. Surround yourself with hope and love. Pay attention to what's coming in. Certainly pay attention to what's going on in there and then pay attention to what's coming out and make adjustments as necessary. All right. You are loved, seen, and heard. God bless you.